Some treasures are small, some are tall, some seem to have nothing in them at all. Treasures are blue and green and yellow, some are loud and others mellow. They're locked with a key, but others are free, and some are too hidden for our eyes to see. They're thin and they're thick, as small as a stick or as big as a brick. They're square and they're round, soft and they're sound, some may be even topped with a crown. Their chests are filled with gems and gold, but others are broken and withered and old. But with all the treasures we can see, and even the ones buried under the tree, the greatest treasure of all is me. Hi, I'm Kennedy Barney. And I'm Morgan Barney. And our project is Everyone is a Treasure. Lately in our family, we have noticed that our little sister Peyton has had a low body image and low self-esteem. She described to us that this was the media's pressure on her to be perfect, and her friends felt the same. We have identified this problem as a national concern and decided to address it as our SEC Life project. We chose the category of Illustrated Talk because we get to talk directly to an audience to something we believe is an issue. Body image relates to family consumer sciences through the professions of a dietitian, therapist, nutritionist, and counselor. It also deals with family consumer sciences through self-image, health, and nutrition. Keeping our sister and her friends in mind, we created an activity to help them feel better about themselves. We had a few girls come over to our house where they were given makeovers and started down our runway in the hottest fashion show of the season. Then, at the middle school, we decided to conduct an activity that would help the girls feel better about themselves as well as be nicer to each other. We passed out blank sheets of paper to the girls who wrote their names on the top of the page. Then, they passed around the paper writing a compliment on each page. We hoped this would show the girls how to appreciate themselves because they are appreciated by everyone else. The theme of our project was set on treasures. So at the elementary school, we sent the fifth and sixth grade girls on a treasure hunt. They followed the dotted path to find the red X which is sitting below the mirror. We told them that they are the treasure at the end of the hunt, and they had to say one nice thing about themselves before they get the treasure candy. So here we are today at our national SCCLA conference to talk to you about a serious problem among women in our nation today. That problem is a low body image and self-esteem portrayed by the media. Poor self-esteem can lead to many social, social, emotional, and health issues, such as lack of confidence, depression, less friends, poor academic performance, even as far as eating disorders or suicide. We went into this project with the intention of letting all the girls know they are each individual and unique treasures, regardless of what society, the media, or even their peers may be telling them. Everyone, no matter if they are 6 or 4 feet tall, if they weigh 80 or 200 pounds, is beautiful. An unknown author said, There is nothing wrong with your body, but there is a lot wrong with the messages that try to convince you otherwise. We asked the girls to whom performed our illustrated talk how many thought this girl was pretty. A total of six girls raised their hands. We also asked how many thought she had a healthy body weight. No one raised their hand. This girl's name is Anne Ward. She is the winner of America's Next Top Model. She is 6'2 and weighs 120 pounds, calculated to be a body mass index of 15.4. A healthy body mass for someone around her age is 20, making Anne severely underweight. This shows just how much the modeling industry cares about body image and only body image. Instead of modeling clothes in a way that would correctly show how the clothing would fit on the average woman, they model clothes in a way that make women feel insecure about their naturally larger frames, when in fact, they are healthy, average-sized women. This is a model, right? She's beautiful. She stays in shape. She's an icon that guides our decisions as to what is beautiful, hip, and trendy. She helps us inform on how to dress if we wish to be beautiful, too. She helps define the notion of a proper way to the society and what's sexy. Isn't this right? Isn't this what we all believe? We shouldn't. We illustrated to the girls that this sort of behavior, comparing themselves to these women and idols, can be very harmful, not only to their self-esteem, but their own body. We told them that they may not think anything of these models and celebrities now, but women learn to hate their bodies in middle and elementary schools at their age. This is a visual diagram by Raider Programs that shows how the media influences the perception of our bodies. It is entitled, Women Are Dying to Be Thin. Are the media and fashion industry to blame? Mannequins are supposed to show how clothing fits on a woman's body. In the 1950s, this was accurately depicted. However, now, the women to whom these clothes are advertising have gotten larger, and the mannequins have gotten even smaller. Not only do they boast a slimmer hip, but also a smaller waist and more curvy figure. The average woman's size is in the normal, healthy weight range. The average size of a model is, almost, is severely underweight and almost disgustingly small. The real woman's body and the model's body are not even close to the same. So why are we all striving for that? Most runway models meet the BMI criteria for anorexia. Models and girls alike are starving themselves trying to be thinner. 
They're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on surgeries to make them smaller, and they're degrading themselves and harming their bodies in the process. The weighted scale can only give you a numerical reflection of your relationship with gravity. That's it. It cannot measure beauty, talent, purpose, life force, possibility, strength, or love. The modeling industry may boast of having more plus size models, but in reality, these bigger girls are sometimes not even the average woman's size, which is between the clothing sizes of 12 and 14, and really not even plus size at all. So now not only is the media telling girls that they should starve themselves, they're also telling girls between the sizes of 6 and 14 that they're plus size, when in reality, they're not. Only 29% of girls who believe they're overweight actually were. Girls the age we spoke to are seeing themselves as fat when really they're not. The media has portrayed anyone who is not a size zero to be overweight. Marilyn Monroe, a huge beauty icon herself, said, to all you girls who think you're fat because you're not a size zero, you're the beautiful one. It's society who's ugly. Your body is not a problem to be solved. It is a great treasure to be found. As you can see on this slide, 50% of commercials in that girls spoke about physical attractiveness. Stephen Colbert said, if girls feel good about themselves, how are we going to sell them things they don't need? Advertisers rely on telling you a negative image of yourself so you buy their product. The pressure to be perfect is solely for profit. Girls who work 400 advertisements and pictures a day showing them how they should look, not how they look, not how they could look, not how they want to look, how they should look. We use our FCCLA project to teach these girls that no one looks like the models and celebrities in magazines. As you can see, a healthy body image is not something you're going to learn from television and movies. Almost all U.S. women are dissatisfied with their appearance, and I think that's because of the insurmountable pressure we put on each other and ourselves to become perfect celebrities. Just because someone else is beautiful does not mean you aren't. 10 million American women suffer from eating disorder, and 20% of these people will prematurely die because of it. Like this slide says, it is a dangerous reality. Through FCCLA and the Illustrated Talk, we hope to make this reality a little less present in our society by promoting a healthy body image in girls promoting them to do the same for their peers. In order to attain more information, we typed and conducted a survey at each of our locations. Here are a few of the results. 84% of the girls have felt fat, 88% felt ugly, and 91% that picture, said that pictures and videos of models and celebrities made them feel that way. Almost all the girls said they would change their image if they could. We are hoping through FCCLA program, the FCCLA program to change these statistics and help the girls in our community find the unique and beautiful treasures within themselves. This is a public service announcement announced by, presented by Dove and the Real Beauty Campaign. In this video, a group of both men and women are in a room with a forensic sketch artist. The artist never sees the person, but the boy or girl describes to them what they think they look like. Then they describe to the, art, what, to the artist what a person they just met looks like. This is a result of the experiment. We would just like to restate our issue of concern, which was the media and advertisement negatively affecting the self-esteem of girls across the nation, even our own little sister. To address this concern, we spoke to numerous groups of girls and conducted various activities to improve their confidence. In doing this, we hope to provide opportunities for personal development and preparation for adult life, FCCLA purpose number one, and also to encourage individual and group involvement in helping achieve global cooperation and harmony, FCCLA purpose number four. FCCLA members can help achieve our goals by setting examples of confidence and always helping to boost others' self-esteem. Just because you weigh more does not mean you are worth less.